Hi there, Perfected the Caster here and welcome to my channel. I hope you're having a great day. In this video, I pay tribute to one of the greatest guitar minds of all time, the legendary Pat Martino. Pat Martino's life story was an amazing journey in itself, where he was already an established jazz artist with several albums on his belt when he suffered a life-threatening seizure. And the surgery that saved his life left him with amnesia, with no recollection of his career or even how to play. He had to relearn the guitar from zero and essentially work to become a virtuoso twice over during his lifetime truly a testament to the tenacity of the human spirit. This jazz legend and titan of the guitar passed away on November 1st, 2021 at the age of 77. I've already stated in previous videos that I am not a jazz player, but I am an ardent student of the guitar itself. So despite not being familiar with Pat Martino's discography and playing, his influence on me was brought about by an article in Guitar Player, where I read and learned about his sacred geometry approach to the guitar. This new to me way of looking at the guitar fretboard blew my mind and gave me immense musical growth almost immediately. So I figured the best way for me to honor Pat Martino Tino is to introduce his concepts to all you my dear viewers in the hopes that his amazing guitar concepts expands your musical horizons as it did mine. Before we begin, you'll need a basic understanding of music theory and its terms, since I will be using a lot of it in this video. If you need a refresher or a handy resource, click on the card above for my music theory for guitarists playlist right here on YouTube. Or you can purchase the downloadable video course from my website, link in the description. Traditional music theory based on the piano divides a one octave chromatic scale into a diatonic scale, the seven white notes plus a pentatonic scale, the five black notes, and moves along a horizontal plane. The guitar, however, divides the chromatic octave into 12 steps or frets. And because we have six strings, the notes move in an XY axis. So not only horizontally, but vertically as well. Pat Martino took advantage of the visual nature of the guitar to organize the fretboard in terms of major third and minor third intervals. Horizontally, major thirds are four frets apart. So if we start on the open E string, four frets higher, you will get your major third. One, two, three, four, that is the major third from the open E and the major third from this note will be four frets higher again. One, two, three, four. And the next major third is four frets higher. Now the major third intervals divide the one octave chromatic scale with just three evenly spaced notes. Okay, one, two, three, and this is the octave. The minor thirds are three frets apart. So if you start on the open E string again, open E, 
Count three frets up. One, two, three. This is your minor third from E. Then the next minor third, three frets up. Now let's continue. Three more frets up. And let's do it again one more time. This leads us to the octave of the open E string. So the minor third intervals divide the one octave chromatic scale with four equally spaced notes. Okay. So major thirds, one, two, three, octave. Minor thirds, one, two, three, four, octave. And when you stack these intervals vertically, you'll get the parent shapes that we'll be working with in the next section. As mentioned in the chord building section of my music theory series, three stacked major third intervals form an augmented triad. And four stacked minor third intervals form a fully diminished seventh chord. This is where Pat Martino's approach departs from conventional music theory, because the nature of the guitar lies in the parent augmented and diminished seven shapes, as opposed to the typical major and minor chords approach. Instead of seeing 12 chromatic notes as seven white keys plus five black keys, we get all 12 chromatic notes within four augmented shapes, or three diminished shapes. I discussed this concept briefly in Music Theory for Guitarists Part 1.5, where I demoed the augmented and diminished seven chord shapes. Since those shapes are built with equally spaced intervals, every note within the shape can be treated as the root of the chord. Another analogy would be to think of the piano as addition. Seven white keys plus five black keys equals 12 chromatic notes, while the guitar fretboard works with multiplication. For augmented, take the three note shape, multiply it by four frets, and you'll get 12 chromatic notes. For diminished, you take the four note shape, multiply it by three frets, and you also get 12 chromatic notes. To get the other tonalities, major, minor, and dominant seven, all we need to do is a small tweak to the two parent shapes. To get major triads, we lower any one of the notes of the augmented shape by a half step. For this example, let's use C augmented. Lower the bottom note by a half step, we get an E major triad. Go back to the augmented shape, lower the second note by a half step, we get a G sharp major triad or A flat major triad. Go back to the augmented shape, lower the top note by a half step, we get a C major triad. <laughs> so from this one augmented shape, we get three major triads. Now to get the other major triads, move the augmented shape up a half step so we have C sharp augmented, and this will yield F major triad, A major triad, and C sharp major triad. Now let's move the augmented shape up one more fret. This is D augmented, and it yields F sharp major, B flat major, and D major. Now let's move one more fret up to D sharp augmented. And here you'll get a G major triad, a B major triad, and a D sharp major triad. Now if we move up one more fret, we get E augmented, which is basically an inversion of the augmented shape that we started with, C augmented. Okay. So the notes of C augmented are C, E, G sharp, and E augmented up here is E, G sharp, C. Same exact notes, just in a different order. So you will get the same exact chords as we first did down here. So G sharp major, C major, E major. And then the process just repeats. Now to get minor triads, we take the same augmented shape. Let's go back to C augmented. 
And instead of lowering any one of the notes, we are going to raise them by a half step or one fret. So raise the lowest note by a half step, we get C sharp minor. Go back to C augmented, raise the second note, that is F minor. Go back to C augmented, raise the top note, and we get A minor. And if that's not mind-blowing enough, the resulting triads from each augmented shape are each other's relative major and minor, or tonic and submedian, or one chord and six chord. So from C augmented, we can get E major and the relative minor, C sharp minor. Or we can get A flat major and the relative minor, F minor. And we can also get C major and the relative A minor. <laughs> now to get dominant seven chords, we lower any one of the notes of a fully diminished seven shape. So from C fully diminished seven, we can get B7 or F7 or A flat 7 or D7. Now to get the other dominant 7 chords, just repeat the process of moving the diminished 7 shape up or down one fret at a time. So B flat 7, E7, G7, C sharp 7, and so on and so forth. Have fun with it. Now what does this all mean? This approach makes the guitar fretboard so much easier to navigate because you only have to think of two parent shapes and from these two parent shapes and tweaking them accordingly, you get everything else you need. And once you work it out and get used to looking at the guitar neck from this perspective, you automatically see all your chord substitutions at a single glance. Okay, so here I have a simple chord progression in C major. C, F, C, G. <laughs> it doesn't get any simpler than that. Now let's substitute the second C major in that chord progression with any one of the other triads that were available from the parent augmented shape. So C major is born out of the C augmented triad. So I can go A minor. So C, F, A minor, G. Back to C. That works. That's also a popular chord progression. Let's go to somewhere a little more exotic. <laughs> so what else can we get from C augmented? A flat. Let's try A flat just for the heck of it. C, F, A flat, G, C. Okay. Now that's a little more interesting. How about F minor? C, F, F minor, G, C. That also works. Where else? E major. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm not sure if this is going to work, but let's hear it anyway. C to F to E major to G to C. It's not as jarring as I thought it would be since they are related, but it'll take a little more creativity to make it flow uh, smoothly. Let's see, what else do we have? C sharp minor. Whoa. Okay, I don't know if I can make this work. Let's try it. C, F to C sharp minor. <laughs> to G to Again, it kind of works, but I need to tweak it some more to make it flow a little bit better. But you have all those options. Okay, so here's another example. The parent diminished seven shape can be used every time you encounter a dominant seven chord in any song or progression. Okay, so let's try it over a blues turnaround in A major. So A to F sharp minor to B minor to E7. 
So when we get to E7, that's where we can play around with the parent diminished seven uh, shape. And the way to do that is to play the fully diminished seven shape one fret or a half step higher than the root of the dominant seven chord. So on E7, you play a fully diminished seven arpeggio starting on F. And then resolve back to the one. Let's try that within the context. That works. And like with my first example, you can substitute E7 with any of the other dominant seven chords born out of F diminished. So F diminished, so that's E7, B flat seven. That works quite nicely. Now let's try another one. So this is C sharp seven. kind of works though personally I would tweak the voice leading a little bit I would probably play it like this so a F sharp minor B minor and then C sharp 7 over G sharp and then a or, or that <laughs> see that would be a little smoother flowing got one more so F okay so this is G7 that works quite nicely too it really is amazing how you get all these options just by simply tweaking the way you look at the fretboard this is the priceless gift that Pat Martino gave me it's been a while since I read that guitar player magazine and I wonder if there's already a generation of guitar players out there who learned the guitar the Pat Martino way instead of the traditional and typical route if you're one such guitarist watching this please let me know and write something in the comments I'm genuinely interested in how your guitar journey is unfolding. And if you have any Pat Martino stories, please feel free to share them in the comment section as well. I love reading and learning more about my heroes. Well, I hope this video piqued your interest enough to learn more about Pat Martino, his life, his music, and the nature of the guitar. You can start learning about him and from him right here on YouTube through the numerous performance and teaching videos that are easily pulled up by the search bar. Now, if you dug this video, please give it a thumbs up like, hit subscribe if you haven't yet, and don't forget to ring that bell. Now go grab your guitar and jam over this Sunny Soul track. Make Pat proud. You all know the drill? Practice makes perfecto. Cheers, guys.